Hi, and welcome back to That's So Nova. I'm Nova, in case you're new here. Hi, and welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about edge painting. Um, I wanted to do this video for a while, and I'm glad I'm finally doing it. I love edge painting. Do I think it's absolutely necessary? Yes and no. I am a person that believes the devil's in the details, that the little things that you do to your bags and bag making can make your bag similar to art it is art actually but if you were painting it's like the little details those little different brush strokes and um different shadowings that you do that makes the paint the artwork draw you know to someone's eye and make them want that painting i feel the same way with bag making i feel that edge painting sometimes can give your bag that little bit of exactly what the name is edge <laughs> Um, when I first heard about ed, um, edge painting was actually for Maggie 55. And if you don't know who Maggie 55, I'll link her, um, her YouTube or her Facebook group in, um, the, the description box. She is a fantastic bag designer. Someone that I hope that one day my bags can achieve to look like hers. I purchased a pattern and I cannot think of the pattern on the top of my head right now, but she introduced me to edge painting. Um, she was using eco, uh, eco flow and I actually love this stuff too. And on the edges of her, um, her placket, her zipper placket, and that totally changed the game for me. I was ecstatic. I went through a whole different edge painting thing to see what I like. There's, there's fabric markers. Um, I even tried permanent markers. Let me, let me point this out to you right now. Do not use permanent markers, especially if you're trying to sell the bag or even give the bag away to a friend because permanent markers, when water does eventually hit them, it bleeds. Ask me how I know. <laughs> okay. So there's fabric markers that you can sometimes obtain from like Joann's or your local hardware store. I do like them, but I feel like they fade and edge painting does a little bit different. Um, I learned a lot from Maggie 55, but from Maggie 55, if I start looking at other leather makers and seeing how they do their edge um, painting. So let me show you, uh, for example, this bag is um, the Derica bag from Toby and I'll put the information to it on the, down in the description box. This is not, uh, this piece right here are two pieces of um, vinyl that are sewn together. Hold on a minute. Let me get it focused, bear with me. There we go. Almost there. Yeah. Thanks, Kendall. So this piece is two pieces sewn together and that is so there's no raw edge. But this magnetic snap right here is two pieces placed wrong side together and wrong side together. And this, let me get a focus. There we go. This edge, which I have to say, I'm, I, I don't really boast over my bag, but I'm, I'm proud of this edge. This is a, um, this is edge paint. I use the base coat, two colors of, I think, Orchard from Emmeline Bag, and then I use the high gloss um, finisher. And I think it makes this bag look super chic. I could have put the right sides together to get the same edge down here. No, nope, matter of fact, this is not right sides together. This is edge coat too. I had a look at it, I was like, it's so shiny. I really wanted to give this bag an extra edge <laughs> and I think I achieved it with edge coat. Um, I am not a master by any means necessary, but I do experiment with it an awful lot. Um, I like reverse applique and sometimes reverse applique will be raw edges and I don't want those edges to have like, this is black. So if I put this on a piece of fabric, you're going to see this white outline. So I like to use edge coat so that way if I put black down here, it can merge in without having this contrast of white. Um, the first thing about edge painting is you're going to have to find out what works for you. I don't believe that there is one brand that suits them all. Um, I do believe that there is various different brands. Um, as you can see, I have, I will each even leather shops, like, uh, I believe this is from Rocky Mountain Leather. This is their brand, and it's very, it's a little bit more liquidy, like Edge Flow. It all depends on what works for you. I've used Edge Coat that I got off of Amazon. As you can see, these things are well-loved. 
Um, it depends on what you want to do. Right now, I am really into, um, let me see, I'm lying, that's my pet peeve. The uh, Gardini, the Gardini, because their, their color palette's really pretty where I can put a piece of plastic down and if I want to make a special color, that, I, that goes with the bag, I can mix and match and use a color wheel to figure out what color I can make something custom like this yellow. If I use the stark, the stark white yellow, the stark bright yellow, it would be too bright on this. This is a more warm color, so you mix it with another color to try to get achieve this. I do like their formula better. I feel like it dries really fast. The thing with edge coat is, for well, first rule, patience. It's kind of like, do you, like do you use interfacing a lot of people have a lot of trouble with interfacing because they don't do the first simple thing after you fuse your um your interfacing to your fabric you're supposed to let it cool down you're supposed to let it get to room temperature you like wait 30 minutes a lot of people i see here saying hey my fusible decoville or whatever is lifting from the vinyl or from the fabric letting the fat the fabric cool down to its natural room temperature helps keep the glue adhere to it and lets the glue do its work. It's the same thing with edge paint. Edge paint is essentially glue if you really think about it. Painting, you're painting a color onto vinyl or leather or cork or a craft text and you're wanting it to stay. So you have to let it set in layers. So the first thing you're going to do is you need a base coat. Every page from inline bags to buckle guy I think for the Gardini one um, in, in Fabric Funhouse, each per, each person has kind of like a disclaimer about the paint won't stay on if you're not using the uh, base coat. I have painted a lot of edges and I did not I did not understand what I was doing wrong because I was not no one told me and it's research that I had to find out base coat second rule no matter what base coat. There is a huge difference, and I can show you right now, between a, a piece of, of vinyl that is um, has base coat and one that doesn't. So let me zoom in, and I promise I won't keep doing zooming in and out. This one right here has no base coat, and you can still see kind of like the white on it, and there's a lot of cracks. Now I'm gonna bring this one up here to sloppily paint it. And you can see the neon yellow a lot better on the second one because I put the base coat on. There's little cracks through there. I put the base coat on, let it dry for 30 minutes. Lightly sand, and you don't have to go back and forth a million times. It's, you're just basically making it smooth and then kind of opening up its pores a little bit so that when you add another layer, it has something to grip onto and allow, allow it to adhere. So you put the second, you put your first coat on a base coat, you let it stay for 30 minutes. You come back, you sand it, you take your um, color, you put it on, and if you spill, have like a wet cloth by you so you can not only get it off your fingers, but get it off the fabric. As you can tell right here, I spilled and I did not wipe it off. You adhere, you put your second layer on there, leave it alone for 30 minutes. <laughs> you come back, you sand, and if you like the way it looks, you can use a top coat. I have like a protecting gloss. I have a shinier fit uh, finish, and I also have a matte a matte dry one where it comes in matte it all depends on what you're feeling like the next thing is tools my favorite one is the chopstick <laughs> um a chopstick um fabric fun house comes with like a it's like a little small dowel and you can get get these dowels at um hobby lobby any of your craft stores they come in there's like they're usually like four feet and you can just cut them down and use them. I use a toothpick, as you can tell, this well-loved paintbrush that I did not clean all the way, that I just got done with the rose gold and it's hard, but I can stick it a little 
um, warm water, we'll get it out and see Dawn soap. There's a roller. I don't know how people use the roller because every time I use it, it just goes everywhere. But again, I'm very messy. I'm going to show you how I put some edge coat on. Fair warning, I am super messy. So yeah, there's nothing I can do about that. That's just part of my process. <laughs> um, so when I, this, this piece has, I got a piece that I already put um, a base coat on. And I'm going to use a color that's nice and bright so you can see it against the black. Use this hot pink. And I like to shake it to make sure everything is together. You can put a little on plastic, go into it. Um, the reason why a lot of people prefer to have it on, on a piece of plastic is that if you're working with a with some material that once you put um, put it on, there might be little fibers and then you're sticking it right back into the fresh paint. So a lot, so sometimes I have little scrap pieces of vinyl hanging around and I just pour some on the vinyl. You don't need a whole lot, just a little bit. So that way you're not just sticking it back in. You can use whatever tool you want. Um, they have this one at, I got from Amazon and it kind of looks like a cuticle pusher on one side and a cuticle remover on the other side. I, I, I promise you when I looked at my nail um, kit, this is in it, but they solicit this on Amazon as edge painting tools. So <laughs> as you can see, it's well loved and I actually like it because this pointy tip is very blunt and it works really nice. I grab a little at a time and I paint. I try to go in one direction and take my time. It's it's better to go do a little because when I get do a lot, I get real, real messy. I'm really liking this hot pink. I'm totally getting spider going off this and I might make something just because of this color, just so you know. <laughs> in case you follow me on Facebook or IG, you're probably going to see something with spider going in the next one. <laughs> and then you let this you're gonna let this sit for 30 minutes look how beautiful that paint is oh my god i love it and you why this is sitting for 30 minutes you can put a piece of plastic over this like a tint kind of so that it doesn't dry out so when you come back in 30 minutes and sand this it then you can put a second coat now there's sometimes i don't put the second coat, second coat because like if it's very opaque kind of like a nail polish have you ever put on a nail polish and then one coat covers it all? Then you're like, cool, I don't have to do the second coat. But it's very rare to find a nail polish that you could do in one coat. So kind of think of it like the edge coat. Sometimes it's very opaque, sometimes it's not. Um, but basically that's it. There's, way, there's ways to do it where it's not as messy as I am. I have tried to put, like, if I have a piece like this, I'll put painter's tape on both sides. And I'll just have at it. And even if the painter gets on the painter's tape, I could just take off the painter's tape when it's fully dry and it will, it, my fabric didn't get touched. So that's the only method I think of. My other method is just take it really nice and slow. You can use, I even use my fingers to get into small areas. I'll use my fingers because it's not going to hurt me. And I just going to, I'll wipe it off with a nice damp towel that's next to me. Um, you can, like I said, use a number of tools. I, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda use all of them. It just kinda depends on the fabric, to be honest with you, like, and how porous and how well it absorbs the um, edge paint. But that's basically it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show, list everywhere you can get it. I know you can get the Gardini um, from Fabric Funhouse, and I'll list that down below, Buckle Dye. I'll list it down below. And he has a variety of different colors. Fabric Funhouse, though, is the only person I know that has an iridescent one. And there, she has, like, four different iridescent ones. One that shifts, like, to, like, green and blue, purple purple and green. Like, different ones that you can purchase. And I'm, an, I'm really enamored with the rainbow hardware. So <laughs> that's something that I definitely want to um, purchase more of. I have one. And I really, really like it a lot. 
So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I plan on getting more. Buckle Guy has a lot of different colors. He has the big, I purchased this big pack from him. Um, Fabric Fun House also has a pack. I believe Imline has it. I purchased Archer and my base coat from her. But I believe in winter, she does not ship it out because of the freezing conditions that they have in Canada. But when she opens it back up, you get an email, just sign up for the email list. I'll put that in the description for Emmeline. And the other person that, there's two other people that I sell the Gardini. I see people on Etsy and Walmart, but Walmart actually is the buckle guy. So if you, cause if you've ever been on Walmart's marketplace, it'll tell you exactly where it's coming from. So I just cut out the middleman and just went straight to buckle guy. <laughs> And you can go, if you don't want that brand and you want to try different ones, um, Amazon has, Edge Coat, Edge Coat has a variety of different colors. I have used it for the past couple of years and I have no problems with it. EcoFlow, it's a little bit harder to get. I had to go to um, Springfield Leather, I believe I got this from, or I'm not too sure. It wasn't Amazon. And then Angelus. Uh, this paint is really cool. They have a lot of a unique color, like the rose gold you see on my thing. They're the only ones that I had that rose gold. And you can ask my husband, the lid, the, the lid is the only thing, and it could be the temperature. I live in Maryland, and we do go below um, freezing in the winter a lot. And I work in the basement. The lid just cracked, and the paint went like all over my cutting mat. And that's the only thing. If you live in the cold climates. I, it's just it's kind of like blue sometimes stuff happens but they and Je uh, jealous has really cool different color um so that i don't see from anyone else like they have like, like this soft baby pink that i'm holding up they have rose gold and their their paint is really good because they, a lot of people use it for artwork for tennis shoes and it, or leather jackets so there's that um Rocky Mountain's a leather place and they have their own version. Like this one's a little bit more liquidy, but it dries really fast and they have cool tools where you can use like a special heat up tool to make the edge coat, like penetrate the fabric and also dry at the same time. So that is really awesome. So there's, these are just a few, some leather companies have their own brand and I say, give it a shot. You got to figure out what works for you and what what company you want to go for. You could be like me and have a Mod Podge or whatever you want. So I will, I will link everything in the description box. I'll link um, Toby's design for Derica in the description box. I know the first looked intimidating, but it's really fast to put together. She's someone that everyone should just look at her pattern. She's a very big up and coming person. I think in her bags are very intriguing. So I will link Maggie 55 who I learned from and Emmeline bags had a tutorial. I want to say for the last bag of the month club for edge painting, I will link her and link that video. So that way you can like get more information. And I believe Sarah Lawson just had a video, um, about edge paint. I'll link her video as well so that you can get different fills from different people to see what you need to bring your bags to the next edgy state. Like I got pun. Oh, edgy edge paint. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, if you could like this video, subscribe, comment down below. I would greatly uh, appreciate it. If you could share, if you think it's worthy, I'll greatly appreciate it. And until next time we see you, happy sewing. Have a great day. Bye.